Welcome everyone to the Chicago Football Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Steve Letizia. You can follow me on Twitter at CFC Bears. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'll be doing a lot of videos like this each week. Um, another podcast here. Uh, last week I took a look at the run scheme that Luke Getzey is going to be bringing with him to Chicago. This week we're look, looking at the passing concepts. So um, obviously, you know, Poles and Getzey and, and Eberflus, they've been talking about um, how they're helping Justin Fields mainly with a QB friendly offense. So what exactly does that mean? What is a, what is a QB friendly offense? What are the, some of the concepts that they'll be running? Um, so um, obviously, you know, a Luke Getze coming from Green Bay, he's bringing he's going to be bringing similar concepts that they ran um, up in Green Bay. Um, if you remember uh, a few years ago, before Matt Lafleur went to um, Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers was kind of struggling a little bit. Um, Matt Lafleur came in and he won back to back MVP. So it's definitely a QB friendly offense. Um, Luke Getze coming from that Matt Lafleur coaching tree, kind of Matt Lafleur, Kyle Shanahan concepts, West Coast offense. Uh, so we'll be looking at a kind of a, a couple different concepts that the Green Bay Packers ran a lot to great success, and some concepts that will work with um, with how with play to Justin Fields' strengths and allow him to succeed as a quarterback in the NFL. So I'm really excited to I was really excited to kind of uh, dive deep into this. I think I got a good podcast coming for you. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and share. Um, so let's get started. First concept we're going to look at is a pretty simple one. It's the Omaha concept. Most this is in most NFL playbooks. Anytime you heard Peyton Manning yell Omaha, Omaha at the line of scrimmage, what that's referring to is just a quick outcut from uh, the X receiver. Um, usually, uh, always against man, uh, off man coverage, as you can see here, the Lions are playing some off man coverage. Um, it's just designed to get an easy completion for a few yards, nothing huge, uh, but just you know take advantage of soft coverage from the from the corners and pick up five, six, seven yards. Um, so this is pretty simple again. So Devontae Adams at the top of the screen. Rodgers is gonna uh, yell Omaha at the line of scrimmage. And what that's gonna do is, is all it's gonna do is just an out route from actually both his outside receivers here. You would see how far off those, those corners are. It's just an easy way to pick up a few yards. You'll see that this is gonna be a pretty easy completion uh, to Devontae Adams at the top of the screen. And clear off the arrows. Again, pretty simple concept, but it's how they pair that with other concepts is the reason I wanted to show that. Because um, what that allows you to do um, with that, you know, Omaha off soft coverage from the cornerbacks is it allows you to implement double moves off of that. So if we take a look at another play here, it's going to be the same idea. Oops, let me back this up. So you have Devontae Adams over here at the bottom of the screen. You can see they have the off-man coverage, that distance there. So what Devontae Adams is going to do is instead of running the Omaha, out the out route there to take advantage of that soft coverage, he's going to fake to the outside and just have a double move to get up the field. You can see how hard the cornerback bites. It's just an easy way to create big plays off that simple concept, um, that Omaha concept. Which is just, you know, if you see a cornerback who's sitting that far off, pick up the five yards early in the game so that later in the game you could pick up maybe 15, 20, 25, maybe even a touchdown. So you'll see, we'll play it here. Again, Devontae Adams at the bottom of the screen. That's what the ball's going to. Out route, and then once the cornerback jumps, Devontae Adams, they return up field for a bigger game. Um, so again, very simple concept here. We're going to get into some more complicated stuff, but I want to start there just as that was a staple in, in the Packers offense. I can't tell you how many times I was watching a Bears-Packers game and I was so frustrated because the Bears were playing off-man coverage and they were just picking up five, six, seven yards um, on easy first down throws or, or even a screen to the outside on those half-man coverages. So the Packers did that a lot. Hopefully, um, they, uh, Getzey brings that to Chicago as well. The next concept we're going to look at is called slot fade smash split. Um, so this is a concept that the Packers run very often. Uh, it's a man coverage beater. So if you ever get a man coverage look, this is a play that the Packers would audible to a lot. They ran it a lot out of an empty formation. Uh, no running backs, um, no tight ends. But they ran it out of uh, other formations as well. So with this concept, you're going to run uh, it's you know slot fade. So your slot receivers are going to run a fade to the outside, Try again, and your outside receivers are just going to run a curl. 
Um, so there is a bit of a rub concept there because with that slot fade, that curl route from the outside receiver is just going to provide a little bit of traffic for that corner. Um, when you get this man coverage look with a single high safety, and obviously they're lined up just in man coverage here, the corner is just right over the face of the wide receivers. Um, it's, it, this is a good concept to get that slot fade um, open. Uh, with this receiver, um, he's going to ru run what is called a middle read. Um, and so with a single high safety look like this, what he's going to do is he's going to go across the middle and cross the face of that safety uh, to keep him um, in the center of the field. If they were in a cover two look, for example, instead of running across the middle, he would just run a seam route and get open over the middle. But in this case, he's going to run over the middle uh, and cross the face of that cornerback or well, that safety. So again, this play is going to go to Devontae Adams in the slot at the top of the screen. Again, he's going to run that slot fade. You'll see a little bit of a rub route, just uh, not not as much as a, a concept we're going to talk about later. Uh, but you can see that cornerback wide receiver on that curl just provides a little bit of traffic for that uh, the cornerback covering Devontae Adams to kind of fight through. Um, maybe gets him a, a little bit more separation than he would on his own. Um, so that's... Um, Kind of where this concept is designed to go so on this slot fade obviously it's designed to go to that slot receiver so if we play this you'll see what i mean there um, obviously Devonte adams is one of the best wide receivers in football um, the bears don't have anyone of his caliber but you could this is a route that you could see darnell mooney running with his speed he's obviously a lot faster than Devonte adams even if he's not as good at, at the line of scrimmage um, so he can run that i talked about this in my valus jones breakdown after the draft but Tennessee actually ran this concept a lot with Bayless Jones. It's where a lot of his big plays came in, uh, came from is this slot fade route. Um, so it's also um, an area where they could use him as well. So this is another look at that slot fade smash split concept uh, that the Packers ran. This is in the NFC Championship game against the Buccaneers. Um, you can see the Buccaneers are coming out in a similar look to what the, uh, the Colts were in that last video. You have a single high safety, and it appears to be man coverage. Um, the Packers are actually going to send the running back in motion uh, out to the outside, which is going to take the running back with them. And that's just to confirm that this is, you know, they're, they are looking at man coverage. So they have that look now. Um, so again, it's the same, same concept. Devontae Adams is here, is going to run the slot fade. You have a, a curl by the outside receivers. Other slot receivers also, in uh, this case, the running back who is split out wide is going to run the slot fade. Um, and then, the again, the wide receiver on this this other uh, third wide receiver, third option, he's going to run a middle read route depending on the safety. So because it's single high, he's going to run across the middle in front of the um, cornerback's face. So now, this is the exact same formation. The formation the Bucks are in is the exact same formation the Colts were in the last one. But if you watch the safety... He's cheating a little bit to Devonte Adams' side. He obviously knows that what the Packers are going to run here. They know that they want to throw the ball to Devonte Adams on that slot fade uh, for a big route. Um, so you can see he cheats over a little bit, which kind of takes away that slot fade. Rodgers could have chosen to go to the other side of the field, uh, but instead he goes over the middle um, to, I believe, Marquez Valdez-Scantling uh, just for an easy gain. So it's just the way that the defense shifts. It's something that Justin Fields is going to have to... Um, to be able to read as well. You'll, so when I start this play, watch the safety. Um, you'll see him cheat over to, a little bit to uh, Devonte Adams' side, and then in that case, there's no. Um, you just have the middle read route uh, on a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So um, again, just a little bit different concept, but the same play uh, from the Packers. So this is the same concept from the Packers. Uh, the difference here is uh, the pick Colts are in a different. Um, different look on for their defense so in the last two uh, examples we saw the teams were in man coverage single high safety here we have a cover two shell um, so you have the two corner uh, two safeties covering their halves of the field um, so it's obviously going to be a, a different different look from that middle read um, so again got the curl routes on the outside you have the slot fades from the two slot receivers and then you have this third option um, who's running that middle read. So we've seen him the two previous times run over the middle of the field against the single high look. This time, he's going to be just running right up the seam, right up the middle of the field against cover two, um, and he's going to end up getting open for a big play. So this is in the fourth quarter uh, against the Colts. This was a huge third down for them. Um, 
you can see the safeties kind of cheat. Both the safeties cheat to that, those slot fades, um, which just opens up that middle field even more for Marquez Valdez-Scantling um, to use his speed to get open. So if we play this, you can see what that looks like. Um, again, this is could be, you know, you need someone on this middle read who has that speed. The Bears have plenty of it. It was an emphasis for them. They got Bayless Jones. They got Darnell Mooney. Uh, both those guys could run those could run that middle read route uh, and threaten the um, offense deep over the middle. They could also both run those slot fades. Um, so I would expect to see Mooney and Bayless Jones being used mostly on those those slot fade routes and also that middle read route. You might see uh, Byron Pringle, Akronir St. Brown being used on those curls on the outside to kind of bring that rub route concept to there. Um, but this should be something that the uh, the Bears run off in, in in 2022. Next concept we're going to look at is the mesh concept. And the Packers were the kings of running the mesh concept. They ran it a ton. Um, great success. Um, and it's something that I'm hoping that the, the Bears will, the Luke Getzey will bring to the Bears this season. Um, it's something I talked about a lot in my Valus Jones breakdown um, when I talked about him. It's something that when I saw, when I looked into the mesh concept, obviously I was familiar with it before, but when I really dove into the Packers' offense um, with Valus Jones in mind, it made me understand that pick a lot more because I think this is a perfect opportunity to use his skill set. Um, so what the mesh concept is, and it's um, two shallow crossers. So you'll see this bunch formation a lot um, with the mesh concept. Uh, but it's two shallow crosses, so the outside receiver is going to run a shallow cross this way. This tight end is going to run a shallow cross the other way. Um, these two receivers, the other two receivers in the bunch, they're going to push up field vertically. They might run, you know, an in route or, or something like that. Uh, but most importantly, they're just getting in the way of all these corners and creating traffic. Uh, this is another concept that is a man coverage beater. Um, you're not going to want to run this against zone. Um, obviously, you know, the shallow crossers are better against man than zone. But the basic idea of this is to get, just to create this traffic. Because if you look at, the, this is the corner that is covering this wide receiver in one-on-one -on -one coverage. You can see how off he is uh, from the line of scrimmage. These two guys push vertically and just kind of get in the way and allow an easy release for that outside receiver and an easy completion in the flat uh, for a big game, for a big gain. Uh, this wide receiver at the bottom of the screen, all he, he's doing is also pushing vertically. He's just clearing out this space because, again, you want to get the ball to the receiver in this area and use allow uh, them to catch the ball and run upfield. So you really need um, a quarterback with pinpoint accuracy here. It is a short pass, uh, but you really want to hit them in stride and allow them to get upfield. So that's one of the reasons why I, I really thought about Valus Jones uh, with this concept because we know he's one of the best wide receivers after catch in the draft last year if not the best wide receiver after catch with the ball in his hands um, in the draft um, and this is a perfect concept to highlight that skill set so again um, keep an eye on this receiver here and this cornerback and then these two guys just pushing vertically and creating that traffic this um, the tight end running the, the crosser in the opposite direction is also going to kind of get in the way of, of this corner trying to cross the field. Um, so you'll see that as well. A lot of times when the Packers came out in this bunch formation like this, uh, a lot of times team would, teams would audible out of man coverage into either his own coverage or match coverage, uh, but this is not the case in this scenario. But again, watch these two wide receivers just getting in the way of this tight end as well. Uh, there are not really options on this play. There's really only one option on this play. Obviously, you know, if they do cover this guy, you might go through your progressions, but this is the number one option on this shallow crosser. And again, you want to get him the ball on the flat there and allow him to create after the catch. So again, uh, watch the, you can see how the, there's two wide receivers get in the way. Same thing with the tight end. And the Packers are able to get the ball into their playmaker's hands with room to run. Um, obviously, this receiver doesn't do a lot after the catch. I believe it's Marquez Valdez-Scantling. I could be wrong. Um... But if you get a guy with, it is Marquez Valdez Scanlon, if you get a guy with Valus Jones run after the catch ability, he could turn that 10 yard, 10, 12 yard gain into potentially a 20 yard gain. Um, same thing with Darnell Mooney. He's another guy that could be used here. The Packers used when Equinemia St. Brown is playing. He's usually that guy, um, one of these guys, a bigger receiver who's just meant to get in the way. Um, so that's another reason why they brought him in. He knows how to, you know, 
get in the way without drawing that pass interference flag, and that that's key. So that's another reason why he was brought in. Uh, but again, this is a concept that the Packers ran a lot. It's a very QB friendly concept, very easy to read. If um, you know, if the if they do drop into man co- uh, zone coverage out of this formation, you can check down or throw the ball away. But it's a very easy read if you get ma- if you get this matched up against man coverage. It's an easy completion for an easy 15 yards. So this is another example of mesh uh, from the Packers here. It's a little different formation, a little different look. Um, you'll see this is actually they're motioning the running back out of the backfield out wide. Uh, so this is they love to run mesh with their running backs. They ran this a lot. Uh, this is an area where I'd love to see you know David Montgomery as a good receiver, Cliff Herbert's a good receiver. You could use them out of the backfield like this. But it's also an area where I'd also love to see Valus Jones as, uh, as well. Um, I, I want to see them get creative with getting him the ball in their hands, so I want to see him in the backfield from time to time. I think that's something they do envision him. Uh, because he's such a good ball carrier out of the backfield, get him some rushing attempts, but also use him like this. Um, you can see they motion out the, the running back into the slot here. He takes the, the linebacker with him. So, again, Aaron Jones matched him on the linebacker. He can get open on his own in that situation. Bayless Jones could do the same thing, but with this mesh concept, it really gets him open, allows him to create after the catch. Um, so it's an area I really want to see Bayless Jones uh, doing. It's also a reason why I think they drafted Tristan Ebner late in the draft. Um, he's a guy who's a really good receiver in college. Um, he split out wide in college and was a good receiver out of the backfield. Um, so the, and he, you know, four four speed. So this is an area where I really think they envision Tristan Ebner uh, working in their offense. I really hope he makes a team because I think they can get creative with him. Uh, but you'll see it's, again, a very similar concept. So they motion Aaron, <clears throat> Aaron Jones into the slot. He's going to run the set shallow cross. We have Marquez Valdez scantling who's running the shallow cross the other way. He, again, he's just creating traffic and getting the way. You have Devonte Adams here who's running just a little hook over the middle. This is a good insurance policy in case they do switch to a zone concept. Um, so if they see it's going to be mesh, audible to a zone, you'll have that hook around in the middle of the field for an easy completion on kind of a check down. And again, this receiver is just running a deep route just to clear out um, the formation. But you'll see, um, and then this receiver here is just pushing up field vertically, just kind of getting in the way, making sure he checks that linebacker. Um, and and these two um, guys are also crossing the middle of the field and getting in the way as well. It's just an idea to create traffic. The ball is going to Aaron Jones the whole way if they if they stay in man coverage. Again, you're going to get him the ball in the flat here and allow him to turn up field for a big game. Um, so again, um, Justin Fields is going to need to you know have some of that pinpoint accuracy. I know it's a short pass, but it's really imperative to get them get the receiver the ball um, out in front and allow them to move, go after the catch. Um, so you can see there was a flag on that play. It wasn't offensive pass interference, even though it probably should have been. It was defensive holding there. Uh, but again, you can see, if we run this again, watch the this, this wide receiver push on field and Lazard, and then how these two guys also kind of get in the way and just muddle, muddle up that middle of the field um, and allow Aaron Jones to get wide open. Again, pretty easy com- uh, completion. When we talk about a QB-friendly offense, it does not get any more QB-friendly than, than a mesh concept. Um, so if you do get a man coverage look, it's pretty easy to get to get an easy completion, and sometimes you even get a big game like this. One last mesh concept here. So the Packers also like to run this mesh concept in the red zone. Um, this is, again, against the Lions. The Lions run a lot of man coverage. Um, so they ran this play a lot against the Lions. This is a different, slightly different variation um, in the mesh concept for the red zone. Normally you'd have your outside receiver here running this shallow cross with the other guy on the other end. Um, they mixed it up a little bit here. They use Devontae Adams more as a decoy. Instead they have the inside receiver running their shallow cross just like that. And then they have Devontae Adams working as a decoy. He's matched up one-on-one with him. He's just going to push up field. Um, same thing with Alan Lazard is going to push up field, and they're actually going to target the running back in the, um, out of the backfield, just in the flat, uh, for an easy touchdown. So all these people, all these guys pushing up field, uh, they're getting in the way. The run, the I believe it's this linebacker who's covering the the running back. He's just not able to fight through all that traffic um, to get to the running back in the flat. Uh, pretty easy um, pitch and catch for the Packers here uh, for the touchdown. 
So as you can see, the linebacker there had to go through a couple guys. If you watch, they had a lot of attention on um, Devontae Adams. This guy's covering him. This guy's um, spying him as well. So if you see that, um, he's used basically as a decoy. And then you have Aaron Jones in the flat for an easy touchdown. So how does team stop the mesh concept? Obviously, it's a man beater. Um, every play I've shown has been against man coverage. Um, so, you know, to stop it, teams will audible to a zone um, or a match concept. Uh, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC Championship game that year actually had a very good game plan against uh, the Packers mesh while still playing man coverage. Um, so what they did is instead of playing single high safety, they played man, um, just cover two man. So they had their... Normally, that would just be having man coverage and then having your um, safeties drop back in a cover two shell. Uh, but, but what they did is they didn't have them drop back as far. They basically just stayed where they were. Um, on this particular play, Aaron Jones is going to come across the middle. And then you have these guys coming across. And then this guy running a deep route. And Devontae Adams is just uh, checking that um, the corner on Aaron Jones. Um, so instead of having these safeties drop back into coverage or having a single high safety like the Lions did and the other teams did, um, they played their safeties closer to the line of scrimmage. And you can see when this when Aaron Jones comes across the middle, Rodgers throws the pass to him, the safety is in a good position to come up and make the tackle. On this particular play, he actually not only made the tackle, but forced a fumble. But you can see, look how shallow those safeties are playing. He's breaking on the ball before it's even thrown. Um, even if they didn't you know, force the fumble and, and pick up that fumble recovery, it would have only been a gain of one or two. Um, so that's how the uh, the um, Buccaneers kind of approached that. Um, so again, um, that's that's one way to do it. Also, teams will, will audible to to uh, zones. Obviously, those crossers don't work well against zones. Um, so that's a couple ways that the that mesh can be defeated. Next concept I'm going to cover is the middle read dagger concept. Um, the Packers ran it a lot in 2020 to, to great success. Um, it's one of my favorite route, the concepts that the, the Packers run, cause just because of the simplicity of it, um, and just also how you how you can run it against multiple different defenses. Um, where the previous routes I was showing were more man beaters, this is a route that's really um, a zone beater, uh, but it can be run against man coverage as well. Um, so I have a good example here of a, uh, of a middle read dagger that the Packers run. Um, First off, the Packers are going to send a wide receiver in motion. This is just, you see a lot of pre-step motion. This is just confirming that the uh, the defense is in zone coverage. You can see if it was man coverage, you'd have a cornerback running with that wide receiver. But instead, everyone just shifts down one. It's letting them know that they're in zone coverage. And what the Falcons are going to do here is they're going to be running a cover three defense. Um, so you have cornerbacks dropping back and covering... Uh, the outer thirds, you have the safety dropping cover the middle third of the defense. Then you have the uh, linebackers covering um, uh, the the middle the middle part of the field. This linebacker here is going to be running with this um, with this uh, wide receiver, which is really going to open up this play. And what this wide receiver is going to do is he's running the middle read. We kind of I kind of mentioned the middle read earlier. Um, it's based, the wide receiver there is reading the coverage of the defense and adjusting his route based on what defense they're running. Um, so as you can see here, they're running a cover three. So what he's going to do is run and cross the face of this safety. Um, if they were running a cover two, um, he would run up the seams or up the middle of the field. Uh, but in this case, they're running a cover three. So he's crossing the face of this safety and taking that safety out of the middle of the field. This linebacker, as I mentioned, is going to be almost running with him and taking him, uh, which is going to open up the dagger route on the backside. So this receiver is going to run. Let me clear this up a little bit just so you can see it. So he's running again that. Uh, let me draw that a little bit better. He's running and crossing the face of that of the safety. And then this wide receiver, Marquez Battle Scantling, is running uh, that backside dagger route. Um, and because they're dropping out into cover three, that middle of the field is going to be wide open. As soon as this safety takes that, takes the bait on that middle read route, you're going to see Malcolm Valdez Scantlin on the um, outside, on the backside, uh, with an easy reception. So we can kind of show you what that looks like. 
So again, watch the bottom of the screen. Those are the two routes that the Packers are leveraging here. Um, and the slots running them at Reed. You can see the linebacker and the safety going with him. And then just an easy completion for Marcus Valdez Scantling on, on the backside. Uh, because they're playing that cover three, that cornerback's very far off. This wide receiver, you can see how much space he's giving him right here. He's respecting that speed and making sure no one gets behind him. So an easy in route. And, and with that middle route taking the, the middle linebacker and the safety with him, it's just an easy pitch and catch for the Packers. As I mentioned before, I love the middle E dagger route because it can be run against multiple different defenses. Uh, the last example was a run against a cover three defense. This is a, a, a zone blitz that the Colts ran. Uh, they blitzed uh, five guys and dropped into kind of a cover two. So what it's going to look like is at the bottom of the screen, Devontae Adams is running that dagger out. You have your slot receiver here who's running that middle read. Um, again, at the on the cover three in the last one, you had him crossing the face of that middle safety. Um, since they're running a cover two here, instead of doing that, he's just going to run a go out right up the middle. Um, that's where cover twos are vulnerable um, with our, with these two safeties dropping and covering the um, the halves uh, there. That middle of the field is vulnerable, so that's why he's running up the middle there. Uh, what that, um, On the back side here, or the front side, I should say, uh, we have this receiver just running an out route. So this is really just a three-man route. They're going to incorporate a play action into this. So the running back and the tight end are actually blocking. This linebacker is going to be blitzing. Obviously, they're blitzing the defensive lineman. Um, and then this linebacker bites hard on the play action um, and then comes back up. Uh, but he should be covering um, a zone here. And then this slot corner is uh, running with this with this uh, receiver. So he's running up the field and clearing out the middle of the field. So what they're trying to do here at the cover two uh, with, the, with the middle read dagger is again, they're just leveraging these two routes uh, mostly. Everything besides that is just window dressing. So with these two safeties in cover two shell, this cornerback covering the flat on the outside, and this slot corner running with that that uh, go route, this middle of the field is going to be wide open. This uh, The play action also helps with that as well. As I mentioned, this linebacker bites hard on the play action, as you'll see. Uh, but he, even if he would be back here, this middle read still would have been open because this this wide receiver running that middle read completely clears the middle of the field. So we can see what that looks like. Um, again, you can see they're in a zone, and then Davante Adams is wide open over the middle um, for an easy completion because of that middle read route, um, that cornerback knows that that middle of the field is, is vulnerable in the defense that they're running. So he needs, he would normally be just covering the middle of the field zone, um, but he needs to run with him. Otherwise, they have an easy, uh, even bigger completion on their hands. So he gives up that middle of the field, which allows that dagger out um, to be successful against that cover too. This is another good example of the middle read dagger against cover two. Um, so we have the defense shifting into a cover two. They were kind of disguising it as a uh, cover three potentially, but it is a cover um, two once they uh, rotated into it. So that's kind of what the cover two, just a you know basic cover two defense. You are going to have this guy running a go route, um, and, and Rodgers decides to go in a different direction here. He actually targets Aaron Jones this play and completes the pass. Uh, because it is a cover two. So cover two is vulnerable in a couple different places. You have the turkey hole is what they call it here in between um, over the corner but before the safety. Um, and then you have the middle of the field. So that's where the, the three areas where teams attack cover two. And this is where uh, Rodgers actually ends up going on this play. Uh, but it also, if you look on the back side, it's a good, um, it's a good visual on, on how this works against cover two as well. Um, so he ends up going here, but if you re look at the actual concept um, on the back side where the play is supposed to go, you have your middle read dagger here, and then you have your um, you have your dagger here, and then you have your middle read. The tight end is running the middle read. Again, against cover two, that's going up the middle of the field and attacking that middle of the defense. Um, you, you'll see um, Deion Jones, the middle linebacker here, um, he's responsible for that middle of the field, if, and he's not supposed to let anyone get behind him. So these guys are covering those areas. He's covering this area. So he'll be running with that 
with that middle read over the middle, uh, which again just opens up that backside dagger out. And you can even see it's just a really good example of how he flips his hips and completely um, and starts running with that tight end instead of staying in his zone, uh, which is what he needs to do. Because if he doesn't run with that tight end, then you just have a wide open tight end 50 yards downfield for an easy touchdown. Um, instead, you get that dagger out over the middle uh, for a nice 10, 15 yard gain. So again, he does come to the bottom receiver in the turkey hole, but if you watch the top of the screen, you can see how that middle linebacker, Deion Jones, um, that's what I kind of want to highlight here, how he uh, runs with that, with the, with the go route and opens up that middle field. And if Rodgers did want to go to that direction, it's a little bit easier of a throw that that um, that turkey hole it, it can get kind of small sometimes so a little bit more difficult throw probably a bigger play than what he would have gotten with that backside dagger but still that's the uh, general concept of middle read dagger next concept we're going to look at is the pin concept so the pin concept is another uh, scheme that can be used against many different coverages um, cover four cover one uh, cover two man coverage uh, it could be used against all of them so it's pretty universal uh, the one we're going to look at here is the 49ers are actually running a cover four defense. Um, so I'm going to play this a little bit just because they're going to send a guy in motion. And what the pin pin concept is, is we're going to have um, this tight end run a dig over the middle. We're going to have this receiver here run a deep post. And then this guy is running a, uh, a go route. And in this particular instance, we have a play action with the uh, jet, fake jet sweep going out into the flat. Um, so what we're doing is we're leveraging the middle of the field safeties here. Um, as I mentioned, the 49ers are going to be dropping into a cover four or quarters defense. So what that is, is we have the cornerback at the top covering a quarter of the field. We have this safety covering a quarter of the field. We have this safety covering a quarter of the field. And we have this corner covering a quarter of the field. And then we have the three linebackers um, covering the, the middle of the field there. Um, so that's what we're looking at on this play. This is a great example of how we're leveraging those those safeties. So what the guy we're really leveraging is this guy right here. Uh, so he is either going to shoot down and take away this dig route, which leaves the uh, post at the bottom of the screen wide open over the middle, or at least matched up one-on-one -on -one with this safety. Um, or he's going to stay in it back in his zone, which will leave this dig route of the middle wide open. So this is the guy you really want to focus on, what he does. In this particular instance, he... Um, so again, let me just draw this real quick. He is going to take that dig route um, over the middle, which leaves Marquez Valdez-Scantling wide open on that deep post. So we're going to play this, and again, watch those, those really watch, um, it's these two safeties who we're kind of leveraging. Um, this safety gets put in a really difficult situation because he's the rotating safety. He's kind of trying, they're trying to disguise the coverage as maybe a cover three, so he's close to the line of scrimmage. He has to back puddle really far to get back to his zone, um, so he's really put in a tough situation. And with this safety taking the dig route over the middle, it's pretty much an easy pitch and catch Um for the Packers. So again, you can see this is the point where they leverage it. He's going to be running that post against this safety. He's running the dig over the middle. And then this safety, it depends on what he does. If he takes, if he stays um, deep and takes that post away, you've got the dig wide open over the middle. If he collapses on the dig, you got the post wide open behind him. So you're really leveraging that safety there. So you can see how that works, and just an easy completion uh, to Marquez Vavis Scantling for a big play and a touchdown. The other nice thing about this play is you see it. So you went against cover four here. I mean, obviously they scored a touchdown, so they did the right thing. But you also have this running back in the flat here who's wide open. You know, if they cover it a little bit better, you could check down to him, and he's got, you know, 20 yards in between him and the closest defender. Um, so, you, so if you had... Um, you know, Valus Jones running that fake jet sweep. You can dub it off to him and pick up big game two if they do. Um, if this corner maybe sticks with this wide receiver better, or if this maybe uh, linebacker gets more depth and takes away the dig, allowing this safety to stay a little bit deeper, 
you got an easy check down for 20 yards. So a lot of different things you can do with this concept. This is just one example. All right, so if you're a Bears fan, which I'm assuming everyone watching this is, you might want to turn away for these next two videos because it's not going to be kind to the Bears defense. Um, but this is another example of the pin concept. Um, we have uh, this receiver running a post. Again, also I just want to say that the Soldier Field um, All-22 camera angle is atrocious, but that's a, a different conversation. So we have this guy running a post. We have this tight end running the dig. And we have um, him running a go route at the top of the screen. Um, so I believe this is a cover three um, based on how the corners are kind of lining up. Um, but I'm a little confused because Deshaun Gibson in the middle field goes completely rogue and blows this play. I'm not really sure what he's doing. Uh, but what he, but um, it looks like it's supposed to be a cover three. But at the snap, you'll see Rodgers initially looks at Devontae Adams at the top of the screen on that go route. Um, which completely gets to Sean Gibson to just comp immediately run to that side of the field and gets taken out of the play. Um, everyone else kind of does their job. You can tell that the safe, uh, the cornerback here, I believe it's Prince McMara, um, was expecting like, a safety help over the top, which he should have had in a cover three or even if it's a cover one, um, but he doesn't get that. And you can see that they should have had a big play to Marquez Valdez-Scantling, but... Luckily, Marquez Valdez-Scantling drops a wide-open touchdown. Uh, but you can see how, if you watch, again, watch Deshaun Gibson. I don't know what he's doing there, um, but he potentially gives up a big play there. Um, so hopefully that doesn't happen for the Bears um, this coming up this year. And here we have the second play against the Bears. This one um, has a little bit of a silver lining because the play actually goes to Equinamia St. Brown for a 24-yard gain. So that's current Bear, Equinamia St. Brown. Uh, but it is our Bears defense getting gashed. Um, so again, pin, pin concept. You have uh, this outside receiver running the deep post. You have this Equinamia St. Brown running the dig. And then you have uh, uh, Devontae Adams at the top of the screen running the go route. So this is, again, just a three-man route. The Bears are in a cover three here, or a single high safety look. I believe so. They're going to have him in the middle of the field. Uh, but they kind of modified their, their single high look. Um, because what they do normally on a single high look, you'd have this safety covering the middle of the field. Um, and then just man coverage from there. Um, and then you have the deep safety and then the middle safety. But what the Bears decide to do, and it's not necessarily a, a, a wrong decision on their part. Uh, but what they decide to do is instead of having that safety in the middle of the field. They're going to use him to bracket Devontae Adams and take away the Packers' best option. Um, so, again, not necessarily a poor decision, but that does leave this dagger out in the middle of the field wide open uh, for a big game. So we can play that. And you can see you have Mar Equinamia St. Brown on uh, Kendall Wilder, um, and then He's just able to make a quick cut uh, and be wide open over the middle of the field because, again, the Bears chose to bracket Devonta Adams with their safety, who normally in a cover one situation would be uh, right in the middle of the field there. So, again, not necessarily a bad decision on their part, uh, but a nice play by the Packers to get the ball into their best receiver, in my opinion, Equinemius St. Brown. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but a good play and something hopefully Equinemius St. Brown can bring to the Bears this year. Next play is play action, bang, dig. Uh, this is a staple in the Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur, Kyle Shanahan, West Coast offense. It's great because it's a simple five to seven step drop and it takes away, when you talk about QB friendly offenses and all QB friendly schemes, this is one of them. There's no thinking that a QB has to do here. It's a very easy concept that works. Um, it's used mostly on first and second down. Uh, any rundowns, this is usually a pretty good play. It incorporates the play action, obviously, play action, bang, dig. Uh, we're going to have uh, a fake jet sweep here, play action. Um, Devontae Adams at the top of the screen is going to get wants to gain inside leverage on this corner uh, because he's running that dig. And then on the back side here, we have uh, Marquez valdez Scanlon, who's just running a, a pretty much a deep curl here. Uh, but again, that play action is just going to get these linebackers moving up a little bit. Uh, which opens up that 
area right behind them for a dig. So again, not a lot of thinking that needs to go in, in into play here from, from Justin Fields. Just a very simple concept to get a nice, easy completion um, against many different types of coverages. Uh, but especially uh, because of even if they're running a zone or if they're running a man, getting that play action um, to get those linebackers stepping up in the hole is what makes this play work. And I covered a lot of the run schemes um, on my last podcast a week ago. Um, so if you want to... Uh, watch that i'd highly recommend it i think it's very good uh feel free to do that i'll put that in the in the um in the description of this video in case you want to watch that uh but that run scheme that they're using that's what gets those linebackers to come up um and what opens up that dig route behind them uh for an easy completion so again he gains that inside leverage let me run that again without the the markings on the screen so you have the uh play action with the fake jet sweep and again the top of the screen that guy is he's just making sure he gets that inside leverage on the corner um he can run that dig route and if you watch the linebackers they all bite pretty hard on that on that uh play action go to the lions and that just leaves the middle of the field wide open for for Devonte adams so again this is a very qb friendly scheme uh concept um doesn't take a lot you take all the thought out of out of the equation for, for the quarterback you just if you see them bite on that play action you got a dig route coming in right behind them pretty simple Next concept we're going to talk about is four verticals. Now, every team runs a variation of four verticals. Um, it's a pretty simple concept. We just have four vertical routes. Um, but I'm going to so I'm going to talk a little bit of just about uh, a twist that the Packers put on it. Um, not necessarily that the Packers put on it, but a, a twist that the Packers ran a lot. Um, it's not something specific to the Packers, but the Packers did run this um, a lot, and that's four verticals running back seam. So it's getting the running back involved in the passing game and getting them uh, running up the seam. So what we got here um, is a uh, game in week four against the Falcons. Uh, they're in man, uh, single high man coverage. They're, they're blitzing five here. They have the w one deep safety, and then it's man coverage across the board from there. So what the Packers are gonna do is they're gonna have this tight end run a post, this tight end run a wheel, this running back here is going to run the seam, hence the running back seams. And they're going to send this uh, wide receiver here in motion on a fake jet sweep. And he's just going to run into the flat here. Um, and that pre-snap notion is very important to this because uh, they are in man coverage right now. Uh, looks like a couple one match. So that jet sweep or fake jet sweep, uh, that gets the linebackers moving over and they have to communicate with each other on who's taking who in this um, scenario. Um, and it just causes a little confusion uh, between those three linebackers or the two linebackers and the nickel corner on who's covering who. And you can, you'll can you see that this um, linebacker in particular gets a little confused and that's where they um, can attack him and attack this uh, post route. On the back side of the play, uh, this is another wrinkle. This is a wrinkle that the Packers actually kind of put into this. Usually, you'd have you know four verticals. You have one, one, two, three, and then you'd have your other wide receiver running a vertical as well to make it four verticals. Uh, but a little twist that they put on it is they have this uh, wide receiver running an Omaha route, which we talked about earlier. So you have the off-man coverage here. Um, you could run that Omaha route. When they're blitzing five like this, or if they're blitzing six, that would be your first read. Um, just a little, little bit of a safety valve. Uh, the Packers also, if the wide receiver is split out wide, that could also be a backside slant uh, as well, depending on how the defense is lined up and how many, how much pressure they're bringing. Uh, but in this case, scenario with that off-man coverage and with the five-man blitz, Rodgers could have easily gone to that Omaha route. It would have been open for a few yards, uh, but he had enough time to work this, the seam concept. Um, so again, you'll see the linebacker shifting over with the pre-snap motion, and you'll see that this tight end, who the ball eventually goes to, crossing the face of that um, of that safety uh, for good completion. So let's see what that looks like. So you'll see that linebacker there gets a little confused. Watch this guy here. He's just put it in a very difficult situation based on the line alignment. Let's get that. And you can see he just can't get there in time. Can't flip his hips to, to cover him. So 
Uh, pretty simple concept, um, but a very effective one for the Packers. This is the same concept in the same game, still against the Falcons here. Uh, this time it just matched up against uh, cover two. Uh, the Falcons try to kind of um, disguise their coverage. It looks like they might be showing showing a blitz and maybe a cover one, just like the exact same form for formation we saw in the last video. Uh, but they're actually going to rotate out of that. They're just blitzing these four, the four defensive linemen, and they're going to rotate into a, a pretty classic cover two. Um, so you have this deep safety, um, this deep safety, the boundary, the middle linebacker coming the, covering the middle of the field, and then this guy is going to drop back into coverage, and that's going to be your four uh, middle uh, players that guarding that intermediate routes. Um, so it's pretty classic cover two. And then what the Packers are going to do is they're going to send this guy in motion. Again, that pre-stab motion is important. He's going to run to the flat. We have hit this guy running the wheel route, him running the seam, and then he's running that same post over the middle, and then with that, um, the fourth vertical on the outside there as well. Um, so pretty classic four vertical, but from using getting the running back involved, um, what and then here, so obviously they went to this guy on the last play. That's not going to be open against a cover two. He's running right into the zone. Uh, but against a cover two, this play works extremely well because you have two guys here on these two verticals. They're going to be wide open, especially this guy here, who the ball eventually goes to. Um, that seam route keeps that, that safety um, to the inside a little bit. He can't sneak out to the outside, and then you have that turkey hole um, in that cover two. So this wheel route is going to be pretty wide open most of the time on the cover two. Like I said, this safety normally would be able to get there in time, but because of that seam route, he's forced to stay more into the middle of the field and not get to the boundary in time. So we can see what that looks like. You can see the pre-snap motion. Not a lot of confusion here because it's a zone coverage anyway. But you can see how that works to get that. Uh, that running back wide open on the outside. So this this uh, running back seems this is a great way to get obviously your running backs involved in the passing attack. The the Bears have some good pass catching running backs. Dave Montgomery is a great pass catcher running back. Cole Herbert showed some signs of being a, a great pass catcher. You could use Bayless Jones out of the backfield if you get creative creative with him. Um, and then Tristan Ebner, who they drafted, uh, is a, a tremendous receiver out of the, out of the backfield. And the Packers got Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones constantly involved in the passing attack and I don't see why the Bears wouldn't be able to, to do the same given their stable of running backs. So this is another uh, wrinkle that the Packers put on this four verticals running back seam concept. Um, it's just scheming guys open so you know when they talk about a QB friendly offense it's more about scheming guys open rather than wide receivers having to get open on their own and this is a great example of that. It's also about getting the ball into your playmaker's hands and letting them create after the catch. Um, so this is the wrinkle here is they have the Omaha route, which is really nothing here. They have um, the post, the wheel, and then the seam. So pretty much exactly what we've seen um, in the last couple plays. But what they're going to do, clear this, is they're going to send that outside receiver on a motion, a pre-snap motion. I'm gonna play this a little bit so you can see. And then they're gonna go behind the line of scrimmage, but what he's gonna do is instead he's gonna stop and then go back towards the other direction. Um, so you'll see they have the Omaha route here. This guy's gonna go over the middle. This guy's going the outside. This guy's up the seam. Um, and what that's doing is taking all these defenders upfield and then this guy's going to be wide open in the flat with no no one near him for 20 yards and allow him just to create after the catch. So this is, again, a place where you could really use Bayless's Jones, Bayless Jones' ability to create after the catch. Um, I believe this is uh, Tyler Irvin, uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, but obviously Bayless Jones is, is a little bit better after the catch than Tyler Irvin. So look at that. When he catches the ball, he's about 10 yards away from the nearest defender. Um, it's just an easy way to pick up, you know, 10, 15 yards, maybe even more if Bayless Jones can make someone miss after the catch. You could obviously run this with Darnell Mooney or Tristan Ebner or, or really any of their wide receivers, but but Bayless Jones is really how I see envision. Uh, that's really how I see them envi envision them 
using Bayless Jones, um, just and make it really easy for Justin Fields to get those quick passes into the flat and just allow you know he doesn't have to be throwing the ball into the turkey hole against cover two, which is a difficult throw. You could be just throwing those balls into the flat and letting their running backs or wide receivers make plays after the catch. All right, now we're getting into the really quarterback-friendly um, schemes here. So the, we're, what we're looking at now is just a play-action keeper. Uh, there's a couple different variations that they ran, uh, but it's a play-action keeper, pretty standard. Um, we know if you watched my last video on the running scheme, Packers love running outside zone. The Bears are going to be running a lot of outside zone, um, outside zone runs this year. Um, the nice thing about doing play action against outside outside zone is because the first movement of the offensive line, whether it's a play action or outside zone, is horizontally or laterally. Um, so linebackers can't key in on their normal keys in the run game. If they see a line offensive lineman going forward, they know it's a run play because you know you can't have your offensive lineman downfield. But with outside zone, your first step is always laterally. So the linebackers don't have that same uh, that same uh, key um, for themselves in the run game to see whether it's a play action or actual run play. So that's one of the advantages of, of running play action out of outside zone. So this is going to be this particular play is going to be um, very similar to um, outside zone slice is what which is what I talked about in my last video. So you're going to have you know outside zone blocking by the offensive line, you're going to have this backside tight end coming through, and normally on outside zone slice, he would block the weak side defensive end. Um, in this case, he's going to be the first option and just and, and be wide open in the flat here. Um, obviously, the running back's going to be in on the play action. You do have a couple routes here. Um, th this guy's going to run deep. You have your tight end who's going to run over the middle as well, just in case. Uh, but the really what you're trying to do is get this guy um, open in the flat. Um, you are they are going to get some jet motion in here too. This wide receiver is going to go on the fake jet. Um, so again, that was also part of the outside zone slice. Outside zone slice fake jet is what it was called. So again, that would look something like this with him blocking on the backside. Uh, this backside unblocked backside defensive end would be that's the slice tight end coming in to block him. Uh, but what they're going to do is they're just going to run that same look, but it's going to be a play action. So you see they have that guy in motion, fake out zone, out zone slice, and then they have a tight end wide open, unfortunately, or fortunately, the Packers tight end drops the ball. Hopefully the Bears tight ends won't drop the ball, uh, but you can see just how much room he has to run. I mean, if he catches that ball, he gets 30 yards um, easily. Um, so... Obviously, that would be a good place, you know, for maybe Cole Komet, maybe James O'Shaughnessy. It'd be really nice if the Bears had that, you know, st that uh, typical, you know, uh, U tight end or F tight end, whatever you want to call it, a guy who can really um, create after the catch. Um, but they don't really have that right now on the roster. I do like Cole Komet. I think he's going to be a good tight end. But this isn't exactly, you know, his forte um, run after the catch or anything like that. So. Uh, but it is an area where maybe they need to, you know, they might adjust the, the U tight end next offseason and get a guy who can who can really run and, and create after the catch. Another wrinkle that the Bears can input that the Packers did not is obviously with Justin Fields' mobility, you could have Justin Fields run this ball for a lot of yards or even just do, um, you know, one read if this guy's covered, then Justin Fields takes off. So um, getting with these uh, play action boots, that's going to be heavily involved in in the Bears scheme, getting Justin Fields out on the run and letting him, you know, either throw that short pass or take off and run because we we know he has the speed to do it. This is another um, variation of uh, play action keeper. Um, so they're going to do it a little bit differently. So they're not going to have that slice action from the tight end like they did on the last play. This is just going to be a normal, out, uh, what appears to be a normal outside zone run. You're going to have this, the Y tight end, Cole Komet blocking. Um, your line is obviously going to be blocking like a like an outside zone. If you're you know not familiar with what an outside zone is, watch my last video. I'll link it in the comments or in the uh, description. Um, so they're going to have that. Then they're going to have... This guy go in as a fake jet sweep. This guy run over mid on a dig route, and then this tight end 
go over the middle as well. Um, but what's going to happen is once the linebackers realize that it's a play action, they're going to panic a little bit and start running backwards immediately to cover these guys. And it's going to leave this guy in the flat on that fake jet sweep wide open for, for a good game. So again, they're going to send the guy on the jet sweep. Outside zone, you have the wide, wide tight end blocking, you tight end going out for a pass. Um, they could have probably hit this this wide receiver uh, for a decent gain but if you watch this linebacker he realizes it's a play he realizes this is a play action and and turns his back uh, to the quarterback which Roger sees and instead of trying to force the ball into here he just dumps the ball off to that wide receiver that was on that fake jet sweep um, and allows him to create after catch again there's another opportunity to get your a uh, short pass that can get big yards uh, based on the scheme, not so much the player's ability. Um, easy read for Justin Fields. Um, you go high-low. Um, if the high isn't open, you go to that to the guy on the on the fake jet. And if he was able to make a guy miss, he might pick up more yards. Uh, but still a very easy concept, something that the, the Bears will be running a lot this year. Again, you also have the, uh, the option of Justin Fields just taking off and running. Uh, that's something the Packers didn't really have the luxury of. of. If, you know, Rodgers runs, he might pick up five yards. Justin Fields can pick up 20 yards easily. Um, so, yeah, again, a, a concept that's very simple that, that puts the quarterback in a very easy position. It puts your wide receivers in easy, easy positions as well. It puts your offensive line in good positions because, you know, the offside zone is, um, you know, you don't have to really, not a lot of pressure to, to pass block there when you get the pocket moving like that. Um, takes a lot of pressure off, off your offensive line, a lot of pressure off, off your blocking tight ends like Cole Komet. He's not one-on-one -on -one with a defensive end like he was on, in Matt Nagy's scheme. It takes a lot of pressure off everyone. It just makes it very easy uh, to pick up yards um, with, when without doing much effort. All right, so there it is. That's uh, the Packers' pass scheme from 2020. Uh, obviously, I was not able to cover every pass play that they ran or every pass concept that they ran, but I covered the ones that they ran the most. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to learn more, um, I forgot to mention this in the intro, but um, I bought this book, The 2020 Green Bay Packers Complete Offensive Manual by Bobby Peters. Um, it helped me kind of um, dive into this a little bit deeper. Um, so I highly recommend that if you want to learn more. Um, Obviously, from what you saw, a lot of pretty simple concepts for Justin Fields to run. Not a lot of progressions that he has to go through. Um, it's a lot of schemed uh, guys being schemed open uh, rather than them having to beat man coverage or find holes in zones. Um, it's a lot of, you know, the scheme is really the star, so much more than the wide receivers or the offensive line or the quarterback. Um, so a lot of easy throws, a lot of getting the guys... Um, the wide receivers or running backs the ball in space and letting them create after the catch a lot of short passes uh, but they also take their shots too um, and it's really again like not a lot of progressions that Justin Fields has to go to through there is a lot of understanding the coverages that the defense is running but at this point in, in any quarterback career once they get to the pros they know the differences between a cover two cover four cover three man coverage or whatever they're they're looking at but uh, you know defenses will try to disguise what defense they're running like i showed on a couple of one, a couple of them they lined up in like a cover three cover one before rotating to a cover two um so justin fields just has to you know if he can just get really good at identifying those coverages post snap um very quickly uh, this is going to be a perfect offense for him i'm sure luke getsy and maddie Rufloos are going to put in some extra wrinkles just for justin fields to utilize his speed to utilize his deep throw ability um but they are going to be running a lot of these concepts that they that the, ran, the Packers ran a few years ago. Um, a lot of mesh, um, which is, is a concept that the Packers ran a lot. Um, that's, again, getting guys open through the scheme, not so much the wide, not putting a lot of, F, um, not putting a lot on the wide receiver's shoulders, just letting the scheme get guys open to the flat and letting them use their ability after the catch. Um, Valus Jones is perfect for this offense. Um, I hope after watching this video or my Valus Jones video, you realize, you know, or at least understand why they targeted him over other wide receivers. Um, I think it's pretty easy to see because their scheme is so dependent on guys making stuff happen after the catch. And he was arguably the best after the catch receiver in the draft um, this last year. Um, 
So I hope that uh, this helped everyone. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, more stuff like this in the future, hopefully. Um, if anyone has any suggestions of what they want to see next, put it in the comments. I'd be happy to, um, to do something based on suggestions. I started this site because I wanted people to, uh, the Bears fans and Bears Twitter and, and just the Bears community to have a say in what, what content is created. So please drop a comment if you want to see something different. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, let me know. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter, CFC Bears. Make sure to subscribe. And we have articles uh, coming out on uh, ChicagoFootballConnection.com. Um, I've had a couple guest articles already, which is which have been fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for, for writing those articles. If anyone else wants to write an article, uh, just reach out to me on Twitter at CFC Bears, and we'll get that set up. Um, otherwise, uh, bear down. Hope you enjoyed.